bright up against the tide. It's always you and I when you want it. Brave pushing on the waves for a place to stay. Bring the harbor, and our ships are passing. My love, this won't last. Our ships keep on passing, missing in the night. Missing in the night. And this tune shall. Okay, folks, so I'm making some uh, bigger timbers now. So these are nine by threes, and that's four and a half by three. That's just what's extra on that slab. And these are the slabs, look at the size of them. Look at that. That's three inches depth, just over actually, it's three and a, uh, an eighth. Look at the size of them. Barely lift them, and that's me and Tracy. Because it's sodded with water, obviously, because it's um, it's still wet, uh, wet uh, chestnut. But um, now I'm gonna need, so I'm gonna need six of these, three of them. I've got all my stays. Just got to paint the ends of these and then the ends of these ones down here. Uh, that just slows the moisture down um, when we are in the dryer with them for a month. And these, all this here. And all these will be draw linings. They will get cut down three times. They make all the draw linings, uh, draw boxes, uh, face uh, on the on the cabinets. There'll be facing bits, which will tell you it, what they are. You know, you'll see anyway. I don't, I'll explain it, when it more when I'm doing it, but just want to show you that slab. So I've had one of those slabs so far. That's the second one. And I'm gonna get two more. That's that finished, then I'm gonna get that pile over there, bring that up here and rip it down into 200 millimeter widths or just over. Bright up against the tide, it's always you and I, when you want it. Brave pushing on the waves, for a place to stay, bring the harbor. And our ships are passing. My love, this won't last. Our ships keep on passing, missing in the night. Missing in the night. Hello there everyone we're in the caravan kitchen today and i'm making a farmhouse um, chutney and the ingredients for the chutney is a pound of onions peeled and chopped a pound of cooking apples 
peeled, cored and roughly chopped. Let's just have a little peek. Oh, it smells delicious. Shame we didn't have smell of vision Also, four ounces of sultanas, four ounces of grated fresh ginger, two teaspoons of mixed spice, a pound of soft brown sugar, half a pint of malt vinegar. You can use cider vinegar. It's you know, it's up to you. I don't think there's a do's and don'ts when you're making chutney, what vinegars you do use or you can't use. And also half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper. And what I've done is I put all the ingredients in the pan, um, let it come to a boil. Once it started boiling, then I've turned the gas right down until it's on a low simmer. I will now let the chutney cook on the low simmer roughly for maybe 60 to 70 minutes all i'm waiting for is for all the liquid to be absorbed um, and then once it's thickened i can um, jar it up just make sure before you make any preserves or chutneys that always to sterilize um, wash your glass jars and sterilize them in the oven this chutney yields roughly about four pound of chutney so if you're using half pound jars that will roughly probably be about say maybe eight jars so you just sort of got to work it out to the size of your jars The chutney now is cooked. Um, it cooked to a nice consistency where it was quite thick and I could put the wooden spoon um, through the bottom, which was nice. Um, I've roughly got about three jars. These are supposed to be pound jars, but they actually look quite big. So from the ingredients that I said earlier in the video, this is roughly what you'll get. Um, obviously, if you are using smaller jars, then you can, you know, just work it out. But um, I hope you enjoy. I must say I had a sneaky taste from um, the bottom of the pan. Just show you the chutney. Oh, it looks lovely. Yes. And I cut a bit of cheddar cheese and put it on the, the chutney on the cheese. And it's lovely, lovely and sweet. And it's got a little kick of chilli. Hope you enjoy and let me know in the comments if you've made your own chutney. Okay, so we had a few people ask about the porch. And as you can see, disaster. We had a nice loady lee in the middle there. And all the line work, we've been hacking it off now. Um, reason four is I was taking in some of these timbers here these big timbers they're very really heavy and if you can see there's a slight bow in it and i always like to get the bow up so as i've brought it out here i've tried to spin it round at the same time it was up in the air and it fell bang hit straight in the middle of the fleur de lis cracked it right across there and down and for me it's hard work trying to uh, repair that so we're going to hack it all off and i'm going to redo the whole thing again and put the same fleur de lis in there oh, it would be a bit, little bit different looking because it was um i've done it with artisticness not right you know rather than copying anything i just did it off my mind so it'd be slightly different but anyway that was a disaster at the farmhouse for us so we've got to do something else again but so i'm just going to keep on clearing this all off hack it all off we're trying to do it gently because we don't want to break the large you see so we're just nipping it off a little bit at a time and then when I do that, I'll do all the beading work, the fluting work around the edges again and do a fleur de lis. And then same, at the same time, I'm going to start doing this as well. Put the beading, uh, the fluting work and, you know, finish this off here. We've got some black to put down here and that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, another job to do, eh? Good morning, Chess. Say good morning. Ruff. Hello. <laughs> Uh, she's so cute. She's hunting again. Anyway, guys, I'm um, this morning. I'm just cutting up these to plank, so I'm giving them a straight edge, planking them up, as I'll show you in a minute. Um, this is the sweet chestnut, and this is the finer stuff I've cut, the thinner. So everything's being cut up now, ready to go to the um, uh, dryer, the kiln. 
and it's looking really nice it's drying down really well uh, but what I want to say to you guys this chestnut and all of the chestnuts and the oaks logs you've seen me cutting up all came I don't know if you can see through the trees there just over there on that um, area over there and that is where the manoir is or the chateau they call it uh, I can't remember the name of the chateau but it's a uh, it's like a manoir chateau smaller chateau if you like but it's through there and it came off them grounds uh, they're managed and this is all normally managed for firewood which is sacrilege in my eyes of being a carpenter I hate to see wood cut up for firewood only waste wood used for firewood and uh, anyway I'll just explain I'm cutting this all up now for the uh, kitchen so this kitchen I'm making I'm just going to take you up here kitchen I'm making in, for us for our, me and Tracy uh, is all going to be made from locally sourced or as much as possible locally sourced uh, timber or all the timber is actually it's just the uh, the the carcass stuff is come from somewhere else but you can see that I've got one here ready I was going to spring out a line I'll show you in a minute I'll put you on the stand and then I've cut a few boards already so these are the boards I'm cutting out. They're roughly uh, eight and a quarter inches wide, so they can shrink a little bit and then, because uh, they're going up for the dryer. So I've already got five. I've got to get another two out of that one over there. And that line, and then underneath, I've got the heavy stuff, which I'll explain to you when we start doing it, what that's for. And under this sheet, because it's just starting to rain, typically, it's all the materials to make the uh, worktops. So every single bit of this kitchen is going to be handmade by me uh, for your pleasure at the end to see. Um, anyway, let's get you on the stand. So here we go. I'm going to show you what I do to achieve my uh, planks, okay? Basically, I eye down this side. This is the bowing outside. I lie down here from this point here. Okay, I'll have a look down there. And I can see I can get a nice straight line through there. So, use a little screw. I approximate where I want to put that. And that's just to hold the end of this line, this chalk line. Because my assistant is off doing another job at the moment. So what I do is I pull this line through, put it in nice and tight, and I just sort of judge it that I'm away from the um, the pithy or wangy edgy side side of it. So I'm off the softwood and into the hardwood. Okay, then I ping some lines. Make sure that line's there, printed in. Must make sure to take the screw out. Doesn't work very well with the blade when it hits it. <laughs> anyway. Then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, so my next job is to see the width of the board I've got because I want to get maximum widths of board. Um, so I go to the smallest point of the board, which is roughly here, which gives me just over 470 in millimetres or 18 and a half inches. So what I do is I want to get two boards out of that so I'll make them um, 435 to the center of the saw. So on the saw, I'll put my guide on, which is here. And the distance between the inside of the blade to there is 435 to the cent, sorry, to the center of that blade. Okay, and then I'll rip it down twice and that gives me two good boards. You'll see that in a second. Before I cut. Always good to protect the ears.
See that quickly processed that board and uh put in stick ready so we've got now seven boards and so on and so on so i'll keep doing that until i've got just showing you again all of them over there carving some planks and they are ready for the dryer very excited about that because this kitchen is a hand painted finished kitchen but internally, in, in a lot of parts of it, you'll see a lot of this um, chestnut on display, whether it's drawer linings or box fronts or uh, panelling, you'll see anyway as it comes together. And it's going to make it very, very classy because um, I'm going to make it a sort of like a high level kitchen, if you like. Um, anyway, keep watching. Well, there we are that's the last sort of cutting let's get you off the uh, stand weather's coming in again uh, big rainstorm coming in over there if you don't like water don't move to normandy <laughs> oh, seems to be rain all the time anyway so they're my big slabs uh, these are nine by threes there's a load more under there there's all the uh paneling uh sorry all the panels cut for, no, not panels, what am I talking about? Planks, sorry. Planks cut, there's 20 there, I believe. I got out of that little pile over there that's gone now. Uh, anyway, that was my last cut. Did you see how nice that saw went through that timber? That's three inches deep and it just went through it like butter. Uh, one of the main reasons is, obviously the sharp saw, because I keep this, uh, the teeth on this saw very honed uh, with a diamond cutter but because the water uh, the timber has got water in it it's like a lubricant it helps to cut it as well so anyway that's it now so everything's cut for the kitchen no more cutting all this is going off to the dryer uh to be dried on friday <coughs> wednesday today i hope you enjoyed that bit of a uh, cutting up a log we've got this left over uh make a nice bench i think nice little bench up in the up in the potager or something like that maybe i'm not sure yet but uh anyway let's crack on <laughs> The 
light is fading fast from this old town. We gotta go. Our bags are packed, so what we waiting for? There's no point in delaying what we both already know. Let's skip this town with me.
folks, you can see what we're doing there. It's a little bit tedious. Uh, we're stacking them because as they lift them off of the uh, with the forklift, this is how they go straight into the kiln. Okay. Uh, a lot of these boards, the majority of these boards are quartz on. <coughs> as they're through and through, uh, we I took the pithy bits out the middle. Got a couple in here, but not too many. But anyway, so you see it there. That's how it's going to go straight into the kiln like that. Then this lot will be on top of that, which will give it weight to keep it all down and then the big boys will be on top of that um, you do hear some people like to have their lighter timbers on the top and heavier on the bottom but I prefer the other way around because the weight keeps the boards flat um, and stops the cupping so much which you will get it's inevitable with drying and that's why we always have a percentage of loss in wood in timber so whenever you buy it, when you're getting your builders in, they always buy, you know, a percentage of loss. Anyway, so we're just going to crack on with the other one. Uh, we speed ramp the rest of it. Look at the speed. So, so you just get to see uh, a day in the life of Buddha and Tracy stacking wood. <laughs> Against the tide, it's always you and I When you want it Brave, pushing on the waves For a place to stay Bring the harbor And our ships are passing My love, this won't last Our ships keep on passing Missing in the night Hi folks, you're gonna to have to excuse the wind. We got a storm coming. Again. <laughs> I've never known it like this in my life. Anyway, there we go. That's all the timber on there. That's all uh, cut to the lengths I need and widths and thicknesses near enough, uh, allowing for drying. Tracy's been helping me <coughs> load up. We've just strapped it all up. And uh, what do you reckon, Trey? Another job done, another big job. And yeah, we've cleared some space here. So we cleared all this space here where Chesley's inspe uh, inspecting. Just got to move that now. But uh, sorry, moving quick, so quick. Uh, got to put this blue sheet on. I see I've tied two ends on there. Got to put it over the top and try and protect it from the rain as much as possible. And then hopefully when I'm driving tomorrow, the wind's died down and the rain's gone, then I can take the cover off, and let the air get to it. Because uh, scooting along on the road will bring the air through the wood and dry it out as well. Anyway, that's it. Job done. Now we wait. Ooh, we... Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, gusted. Help, help. So, folks, I'll be back to the kitchen. That's all I'm going to be laying this floor. I haven't been here for a couple of weeks because uh, obviously I've been in England and then we've been preparing all the timber for the worktops for the kitchen all the way around and getting it off to the Siri, which is going in, in the morning. But uh, So back in here now. So from next week, you'll see me laying the floor, building the stud walls, putting the insulation in. Um, doing you know more work in here now because we're going to be concentrating the kitchen now i've got a major job out of the way and i ain't got to worry for a month while the uh, timber's drying in the um siri or in the uh, kiln so back to here so check out one of these videos and uh if you ain't seen it before go back and have a look and uh enjoy <laughs>